Hello everyone, welcome back to another instalment of the Warwick F1 show and today we are going to be previewing uh, round 10 of the Formula 1 2024 calendar. Uh, we are back to Catalonia uh, in, in Spain, uh, a track that we are very familiar with uh, over, over the large majority of the Turbo Hybrid era. Uh, I am joined once again by Will Kingswood and Chimme and yeah, so we're just going to, so if we in terms of looking at the at what's going to kind of what we can expect from the the race so far uh, as that's going to be occurring this weekend um obviously the major change i guess that we uh talked about before was that last year we had some changes made to the track to try and improve the quality of the racing there we cut the chicane in sector three uh which uh should hopefully carry give an op opportunity to carry some more high speed uh, into the final corner ready for the back straight um, and did and we, we saw the effects of that last year and um, did we uh, did we really think that that made much of an improvement or the objective I guess the objective was to create more overtaking opportunities because I guess typically we've had uh, it, it hasn't been the, the best racetrack uh, to to see lots of overtaking opportunity it's mainly been tire management as such so do, do we think that those changes seem to have worked last year and, and can we expect the same from this year i think i can't say i remember much about last year's spanish grand prix but i do think the changes did make an improvement i think regardless of kind of how you felt about any anything else in in f1 one of the things that most people agreed on was that that um chicane at the end of end of catalonia was a bit it was a bit useless it kind of disrupted the flow of the track made um overtaking a lot more difficult and i think especially now we are seeing realistically a lot more teams especially at the front closer together you've got the red bulls who um are maybe still the quickest but maybe by not so much you've got ferrari and mclaren who have traditionally been up there and as we saw last week maybe you also have mercedes as well if you are seeing at at, at least eight or at yeah at least maybe even at most eight cars um all competing at the top then these changes that maybe you didn't see as much of an impact on last year they're probably more likely to have um, a positive a positive effect for the race this weekend. I suppose if we can't really remember much from last year's Grand Prix, it tells us how uh, how exciting it was. But but we have been in store for some for some uh, for some much closer racing, I would say. Um, and the other thing that we that we have uh, to the other thing, I guess, changes to the track as such is that we used to go for testing in Barcelona mainly. Uh, in during the winter testing and that's uh, I, I guess a lot of people could argue meant that the teams had a lot more data on this track compared to uh, other tracks and and that meant that kind of led to the predictability of it all um, but now we haven't had testing there for a little while we've had uh, testing uh, in in Bahrain instead and do we maybe think that that's going to add a bit more of the unpredictability side of things in terms of um, in terms of how the drivers set up in qualifying and, and also the, the different strategies that teams might use to try and approach the race. Yeah, I guess it can, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so yeah, because obviously the less data the team has, the more unpredictable it becomes because the teams are less optimised. So it really is a challenge, more of a challenge for the teams to really get the best setup for the cars. Um, but, yeah, I suppose the biggest problem with Barcelona is just the lack of op of, of real overtaking opportunities, especially with only the back straight being a really, the really stick one. But at least the removal of that final chicane should make things a lot more easier now with the current grid, of, with the current crop of, of cars this season actually being fairly close to each other. You know, you know fine margins between first place and eighth place to be honest at this point you know with red bull struggling with curb riding um ferrari struggling with strategy in the corners it's going to be interesting to see because especially the circuit offers all kinds of cornering and top speed so yeah let's see i think well i mean i think as well um you do have that tire strategy a bit more spain is a track that does tend to be a bit tougher 
on the tyres. And obviously, if it's more than a one-stop race, if it does get into a two-stop race, you do have that strategy strategy element kind of coming into it a bit more. So I think there's there's cause for optimism. And especially after the last few races where we've probably for the first time seen Red Bull have to really fight to to take those wins. It may be a bit less of a fight this time i think one of the big red bull issues that has been identified is how they kind of go over over bumps and obviously we've been to monaco and canada both street circuits both tend to be a bit more bumpy whereas we're coming into catalonia which obviously as a traditional kind of race circuit perhaps a bit more flat but the the fact that you've seen kind of ferrari and mclaren and even even mercedes last week make make that progress means that even if red bull are maybe the quickest car they may not have that margin for error they may not be able to kind of make those mistakes and if if that happens for whatever reason i mean you can expect um marinello or the team and papaya to kind of pick up pick up those pieces and maybe get some good points out the weekend yeah, I think when I when I when I heard you say some of the issues that Red Bull have identified, I thought you were going to go on and say their second driver. But if we think about <laughs> if we think about um, it, you, you mentioned with the tyres, it's quite tricky with the tyres. But c- does that mean that I guess that could go either way, really, in the sense that either teams are co- kind of forced to do two or, or even three stop races. And that means that there's there's a lot of drama in terms of the different strategies that people are on. Or on the other hand, you could see all the teams having their main priority being that they nurture the tyres home, they try and really focus on managing their tyres. And as a result, not many drivers are actually looking to do overtaking or looking to kind of make their way up the field because they're worried that it's going to have too much of an effect on their tyres and they're not going to be make, able to make it to the end of the race. And I suppose maybe now uh, with, as we mentioned, the changes that they made to the track, that might start to shift to the direction of the former because teams know that there's the possibility of making overtakes around here. And as we said, with the with the changes made to the car in the past couple of years, especially with the, the I think this was one of the main tracks in previous years where the dirty air had a, had a great effect on the limited opportunity to overtake. Uh, and so do you, do you think that it'll, do, do you guys think that it'll, it'll mainly be tyre management or it will be actually lots of pit stops if we're talking about just a, mainly a dry race? I mean, I think you can see probably both strategies. Maybe the teams will split cars depending on whether they want to go more aggressive with one, go less aggressive with another. It probably end up being determined by kind of which situa- which situations the um, the cars are in. Is someone stuck behind and maybe they pit to try and get that undercut, or maybe close back up with the tire offset, or are they are they up the front? don't and don't want to take as many risks i think you're gonna see you'll always see kind of people going off strategy if they need to it maybe maybe won't be as as much variation because i think the data has now got so good in terms of predicting what is and isn't the best thing to do but at the end of the day you can't predict everything in f1 and obviously it only takes one safety car one virtual safety car to um to throw a spanner in the works and potentially throw up all sorts of kind of different strategies even more than maybe you would see um in in kind of a traditional race so i don't think it will be one or the other but you might see a trend develop just based on what is better between going aggressive or or being a bit more conservative um with the strategy Yes, yeah, certainly it's uh, it's it could go uh, as as what was just saying there. It could it could really go either way with the with the strategies and possibly the introductions of uh, the different uh, either safety car or, or a virtual safety car, and also up to the drivers and seeing how they perform. And we've obviously spoken a lot about uh, the the drivers to look out for at the front, and as we said, Red Bull with uh, less of their dominance from last year, they're really going to have to make sure that they are. Uh, really uh, kind of on point with all their decisions if if they are to uh, beat the McLarens and um, the teams behind them, which I'm going to talk on to uh, now. Uh, the, the two, I think, teams that are going to be interesting for this race is Mercedes and Ferrari, I think, because 
Mercedes last race were very were very good and uncharacteristically good, I guess you could say. And Ferrari is kind of quite the opposite, where typically they've been very good throughout the season. They had an absolutely poor race in Canada. Uh, both drivers having a double DNF. Obviously, for Leclerc, it was very unfortunate with uh, his reliability issue. And then uh, for Sainz, uh, spinning out in the rain. But both of the cars were completely off the pace before those retirements happened. And so it'll be interesting to see where they are. Do we think that... For this weekend, that the pecking order as such is going to look a lot more like we saw in Canada, where Mercedes are right up there and Ferrari are also struggling a bit, or is it going to revert back to what we saw originally? Because as we said, Mercedes are going to be looking to try and continue this form and Ferrari are going to hope that it's the opposite, that it's just a kind of, it's a, it's a one-off from Canada and that they're right back up there. So wh where do we think that these two teams are going to actually uh, find themselves in this race because well, I mean, to be fair, it's it's a hard one because obviously Mercedes did obviously show have a strong show in Canada. The upgrades finally worked, um, but um, I reckon Ferrari would be able to bounce back this weekend. I think Canada might have just been a massive blip considering the season form, especially they had the upper trajectory with their upgrades working. You know, they're really really good with tires which I think the Mercedes of the top four are probably the worst at when it comes to with management. Because um, obviously the McLaren and the Ferrari are known to be really kind on the tyres and Red Bull and Max Verstappen, obviously, is just Max Verstappen. And Sergio Perez is known for. And Sergio Perez, whether he's actually going to be up there or not, is a different story. Um, but yeah, so probably McLaren, Mercedes might be in a little bit of back foot with tyre management. But I reckon on single that pace at the very least, it's going to be very, very tight. Thing, especially in the Ferrari, probably will have better straight line speed performance, and Mercedes will be better in some of the corners. So, you know, I reckon probably be quite. It'll be a, it'll be a close battle between the two. Yeah, and I mean, I think you have both teams coming off. Maybe like, is it? Oh, it was a big upturn in form for Mercedes and a big downturn in form for for Ferrari. But we're going back to a track that is kind of more traditional in its characteristics and from just trends so far ferrari should be i think up there for me actually it's more of a question of what mercedes are kind of doing is there is there improvements does, does that front wing um bring them an advantage over all kind of all sorts of tracks or is it just as we've kind of seen with the car for the majority of the season is it a very specific kind of level the, at which um, they do gain that performance from. And if they are up there, maybe not at the Red Bulls level, but if they are up there with the Ferraris, with the McLarens um, this week as well, and I think you are looking at maybe a real upturn in the potential fortunes of, of Mercedes that they won't be kind of marooned as that fourth, fourth place, um, yeah, fourth place team, uh, behind uh, Ferrari and McLaren and ahead of Aston Martin, that they may be able to challenge um, challenge the two formers and even potentially uh, when if they fall back in on some tracks, even potentially challenge Red Bull as well. So I know, I mean, obviously as a as a Mercedes fan, as a Lewis Hamilton fan, I'll be keeping an eye on them, but I do think they have the most to kind of potentially gain and if if they do well at Spain then there is I think hope for what a season or there's hope for a season that was potentially looking looking a bit hopeless um after after the first six or seven races and certainly Mercedes is going to be carrying a lot of confidence into this race after as we said their third and fourth place finish um perhaps not what they hoped for in the context of that race but certainly a massive result for them in the context of their entire season uh, and in terms of a race that Mercedes is going into after a good result like that, it, you probably couldn't, or at least Hamilton couldn't ask for anything better. Hamilton is, uh, I'm looking now, a six-time race winner at uh, at Spain, uh, drawing with uh, at the top with Michael Schumacher. And uh, obviously his last race win there was in 2021 and then before then won for the past five years. So he really does like this track. And it's definitely, I think, a strong track we've seen in the past for Mercedes. And so it's, you've got to say it's a golden opportunity for them to actually want to 
to turn their form around and actually start to get a little bit of momentum um, before the summer break in in getting some more points and actually cementing themselves. Probably they're not. We can safely say they're not going to break into the top three, but definitely secure that fourth place. Uh, which again, as we're talking about Mercedes, seems still seems quite weird to say that, but um, but but yes, yeah, certainly what they can hope for in the context of their season. Um, can we think of any other drivers that are uh, of notice? I mean, obviously there's. Um, there's going to still be big questions surrounding, uh, obviously, like RB and Daniel Ricciardo and Haas trying to continue their strong showing as well. Um, but I guess that's something we can expect for, for every race and not really specific for uh, Spain. So is there any others that we can, that we can think of? Um, I think for, no. for me, you've got to look at i think i don't think there are many specific narratives i think for me at the moment maybe um potentially even logan Sargent has to kind of start putting in those performances obviously the news this week about the faa potentially um providing an exception for um the super license for kimmy antonelli to potentially get him into the williams even later on this season this is kind of make or break time for Logan Sargent, so I, I mean, I'll be keeping an eye on him. I think another one as well is uh, Alpine, who are kind of bouncing back a little bit from their um, poor start to the season. We throw a double points finish in Canada. Uh, I mean, can they can they kind of continue that form? But equally, you're looking um, to a bit of I think the intra team rivalry is is growing there. Ocon leaving the team obviously gas um the team telling him to let Gasly pass and they're not reversing the positions in canada i think there is always that potential for another kind of chapter in in that relationship to to progress and if it continues to be get acrimonious then you might start to be seeing some fireworks um from from alpine so those those probably be the um two two narratives i think that will be good to focus on at the at the end of the end of the uh grid to be honest let's just hope it's a good race that's the only thing i can add on to it <laughs> no that's that's very true and um i think as as we were saying even though ocon we now know that is confirmed that he is leaving the team uh it's there's certainly not going to be any uh any change in in the rivals, I guess, that we've seen from from uh, Monaco and Canada alike. But uh, but we'll move on to our predictions as we usually do. Um, now the as we learned from last week, the scores are very tight. Uh, so both Will uh, and Chima here are on tied on fifty seven points in the lead, and then Will Biddles, who unfortunately can't be here with us today, uh, which I'll be doing the predictions for. Uh, whether he likes it or not, as he uh, was quite angry with me for not choosing Leclerc uh, to win in Monaco. He's on 56 points, so uh, it's really close at the top. And yeah, so we'll go through our predictions now. So it turns out that uh, for this week, uh, if if uh, people listening don't know already, we basically do um, a system where, because obviously it's very obvious who we would want our first choice uh, person to be for first place, we... Both all of us can't choose the same person uh, for the for who wins the race essentially, and we take it in turns to decide who that is. And it's my turn this week for choosing the first place. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Verstappen. Um, and then we also predict our top five. Uh, so that's one point if they are in the top five, and then three points if they're in the correct position. So. I'm going to say Norris second. Um, I, I still think, obviously, Ferrari would be the only other choice team I'd say would be there. We obviously know that Perez, I, I, I lost faith in Perez a, a, a long time ago. And I, I think Ferrari, although they will be up there, they'll still maybe uh, take a bit of time to recover or, or maybe won't be exactly challenging for the race win as such. I, th I still think that's going to be down to Lando Norris. I can't really see at the moment anyway uh that it's going to be any other way and i'm going to say a double mclaren podium as well so piastri finishing p3 uh as i mentioned i think ferrari will be up there so i think leclerc is going to be in p4 and then kind of hoping for a bit of continuation of some mercedes good fortune and i said russell p5 
And uh, well, I'll, I'll I may as well do my um, one, two, and three point predictions while I'm here. So essentially, we uh, we pick uh, three different predictions, and the more points that they're worth, the more unlikely they are. So for my one point prediction, I said that both McLarens will finish in the top six. Uh, so just what uh, basically in line with my top five predictions. In my for my two point prediction, I said that uh, a has. Well, I, I think this is all right. A Haas will get into Q3. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a nod from from both, from Will and Chimis, so I think that's fine. And then for my three point prediction, uh, I'm saying, well, I'm I'm going to be predicting uh, a boring race, a bit like I did for Monaco. So I'm going to say that there is going to be, uh, if this is all right, there there is going to be no non DRS assisted overtakes in the race. So any overtakes that happen in the race uh, on track are going to be using DRS on a back straight somewhere. There's not going to be any overtakes anywhere else. That's what I'd be predicting. Is that... What are we saying, like, switchbacks? So let's say they're going into turn one and then kind of you switch back on in turn two and turn three. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Do you think we should... We should... how, about, how about we wait for the race and then we'll judge it? Because it could just be one into turn four. Well, hang on. That's not... <laughs> what, so you just don't give me the points? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be fair on my judgment. But, like, it needs to... I feel like... We Do you could, feel we Will has spend... been fair? We could spend all day thinking of scenarios for what is... We could say if it's a quick... If it's a switchback in the following turn, then it doesn't count. Okay. So it has yeah, to be works. on its yeah. own, uh, in in a in a corner or on a straight that is not DRS assisted, pretty much. Um, so we can, yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can as that uh, hopefully, uh, and hopefully I do uh, Will Biddles uh, a bit more justice than what I did last time that I predicted him. Uh, right. So if we, uh, Jimmy, if we, if we go to you first, what is your uh, predictions for this week? So, yeah, okay, for this week, I have gone for a slightly different podium setting. I've gone for Nor Norris to win, uh, followed by Verstappen second place. So I'm thinking, you know, it could, might, could, might be, it could be a good fight for the front. Uh, and then a Charles Leclerc third place. I feel like Ferrari Howe will be able to bounce back enough, and Leclerc will be in probably quite hungry to bounce back, considering the disaster he had last race. Um and stuff, and hopefully Ferrari's strategy doesn't get in the way. Um, but yeah, fourth place, I've gone for Lewis Hamilton for the same reason. I think he's looking to be bouncing back after what was a fairly a fairly underwhelming uh, start to the season. Uh, uh, and Piastri P5, I think, yeah. I think he'll be in there, but something is going to happen to Oscar. He's just not going to be as lucky. Um, so, for my one-pointer, uh, I've gone for three different teams on the podium. Uh, that's what my so obviously uh, um, for my two pointer. I have gone for Sergio Perez. Can I make it um, at least three Red Bulls in Q three? Would that work? Sonoda and Perez. Yeah, I, Q3. I, I think that would work. So so yeah, two. Well, I mean it's the. Uh, like Perez in Q3 at this point is is a is a two point prediction in its in of itself, but uh, yeah, no, I think that's fair yeah. enough. So so out of the four, uh, the two RBs and the two rebels, yeah, that, that sounds good. Yeah, and for my three pointer, I'm going a bit. Of, I'm going a bit out there, and considering what has happened in Le Mans uh, last week, uh, I'm going to go for an an Alpine double engine DNF. <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, so with the disaster that Alpine has had with the uh, at with uh, Weck last week in Le Mans, and you know, um, for some reason they're thinking it's the World Explosion Championship rather than the World Endurance. But um, yeah, let's they're see. Taking it back, they're taking it back to the old Renault engines in 2014. Yeah, yeah. No, I literally. think that sounds, that sounds. I think that sounds very good. Uh, and then finally, Will, you are so you're picking last this week, so you can't pick uh, Norris or Verstappen in first place. Uh, what have you gone for for uh, your Spain predictions? 
On the theme of bounce back, I've gone for Charles Leclerc, P, P1, I think. Well, you're looking two years ago, probably on the way to winning this race before um, engine kind of failures put paid to that um, second place. I've gone Lando Norris, I think, at the moment. If you had to put money on a second place finisher, it would be Lando Norris. And I think he'll do it again here. Obviously, you've got to have Verstappen in the top five to kind of guarantee that point. And third is always the one I feel is the most up in the air. So I'm going to put Verstappen P3 and then P4 and P5. I've gone for Carlos Sainz um, at his home race um, and then Lewis Hamilton um, in the in fifth place so, so you haven't got you haven't gone with a tactical verstappen b5 you actually think that he might finish third or is I, that I, slightly tactical? I just always think that third is the position you can never really predict or at least That's this year it's been the difficult one to predict yeah so okay i've always i've always thought because i feel like there's the strategy there is like i think i can better do five than three is basically my my strategy um outside of that along the actually along the spanish lines for my one point prediction i've gone alonso in the top eight uh finish um for my two point prediction um this is a bit of a different one so i've gone three cars in blue so three cars that are racing blue and i've said they're the alpine the williams or the rb um will finish from p11 to p15 Three, so so three out of what's that? Five cars. Five positions. Out of five positions will be blue. That is very, that is very well thought out. <laughs> three That's, out. Of, okay. Th- yeah, three out of five of them will be blue. Um, and then my three point prediction: uh, Red Bull one two. And this isn't because I think Verstappen won't win. It's because, because I you think Perez correct. will not finish to B two. <laughs> Uh, how do how do those sound? I think they sound all right. Yeah, they sound pretty good. Um, yeah, no, that that's no, that's that's very good. Uh, so we'll tune in next weekend with our Spanish review to see how all of those uh, predictions get on. But uh, should be should be uh, hopefully an entertaining race. But uh, we shall leave it there. So uh, thank you all for tuning in to our Spain preview. And uh, tune in next time, as I say, for when we will review all those predictions next time. But uh, until then, thank you for listening.